Hello, I'm Paul Weston. Now, was Health Secretary Matt Hancock responsible for a democide in the care homes of spring 2020? And is this a reasonable question to ask? And the definition of democide is as follows. Uh, the killing of members of a country's civilian population as a result of its government's policy, including by direct action, indifference and neglect. And when Hancock was confronted with the blanket issuing, illegal apparently, of uh, do not resuscitate notices in care homes without the consent of the individuals involved or their family members, uh, he did at least manage to appear guilty. Uh, see here. I totally agree with you about the uh, uh, the, uh, the the inexcusable um, nature of any attempt to use uh, do not resuscitate orders without consent. Um, and when there were concerns raised at uh, blanket consent being put in place, um, we stopped that immediately. He looks guilty, doesn't he? But I don't think he is actually capable of feeling genuine guilt. Uh, I'm not a doctor spoonbender of Vienna psychiatrist, but to my untrained eye, Hancock might well be a sociopath or a psychopath. And when he was accused on social media of being complicit in what happened in our care homes, uh, Hancock released a TikTok video sneering at the people he termed anti-vax nutters. Uh, see here. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm devastated! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm devastated! <laughs> anyway, psychopath or not, let's look at the data uh, regarding excess deaths, midazolam and Matt Hancock uh, in a segment we could label the, the great midazolam uh, care home mystery. And uh, number one, uh, Hancock seemed to delight in spreading fear. In a WhatsApp conversation, he stated, we frighten the pants off everyone with the new strain. And Damien Poole replies, yep, that's what will get proper behaviour change. And Hancock then says, when will we deploy the new variant? Now, to my mind, deploy sounds positively militaristic. You know, the new variant either existed or it did not. It was not there to be deployed by Matt Hancock uh, in order to engineer fear. Uh, two, there's no argument about the sudden bulge in the excess deaths in the spring of 2020. Uh, three, there is no argument that some 30,000 excess deaths occurred in care homes over April and May 2020. And the following series of graphs are sourced from a January 2024 ResearchGate study titled Excess Deaths in the United Kingdom, uh, Midazolam and Euthanasia uh, in the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, four, there is no argument that despite COVID-19 circulating for several months prior to April 2020, deaths were entirely normal until the very point the government decided to muck about with the care homes see the red circle, uh, after which deaths immediately shot up to a Sigma 20 level, which represents a, a once in several billions, billions chance of occurring naturally. Five, we know there was a huge increase in the use of the life-ending drug midazolam in the spring of 2020. Six, there is no argument that this was highly unusual. Just look at uh, April 2020 in the yellow circle. Uh, which shows more than double the number of midazolam injections compared to the previous 20 plus years. Seven, there is no argument that the increased deaths uh, in red track absolutely the increased number of midazolam injections uh, in green. Uh, eight, we know Matt Hancock ordered the NHS to withhold care from ill care home patients and put them on end of life uh, measures instead, which means Liverpool Care Pathway, uh, midazolam and death. Uh, nine, we know Matt Hancock, presumably because he was health secretary after all, uh, ordered the blanket use of do not resuscitate notices uh, without the consent of individuals or family members and somewhat curiously uh, the police don't seem terribly interested in this issue which I find very strange. Surely it amounts possibly to, uh, to mass murder. 
Uh, 10. Midazolam can act as a life-threatening respiratory uh, depressant, um, especially when it's used alongside morphine. And despite this reality, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence excellence uh, recommended its use for breathlessness in its infamous guidance ng163 document uh, which has disappeared by the way uh, nice stated the following uh, sedation and opioid use should be uh, should not be withheld because of an inappropriate fear of causing respiratory depression now, how astonishing is that uh, it also added the following uh, at the time of publication April 2020, opioids and benzodiazepines did not have a UK marketing authorization for this indication or route of administration. Oh, well, golly, I wonder what lawyers would make of that. 11. Hancock is economical with the truth. When he was accused of using midazolam to polish off thousands of oldies, he replied he had never heard of midazolam prior to the accusation. Well, he lied. He knew all about it in the spring of 2020. Uh, here he is talking about it with one Dr. Luke Evans. Do you have enough syringe drivers in the NHS to deliver medications to keep people comfortable when they're passing away? Uh, yes, we do. And the second one is with that, that's to, the syringe drivers is to deliver medication, particularly things like midazolam and morphine. Um, do you have any precautions put in place to make sure we have enough of those medications to be delivered? Yes. And we've got a big project to make sure that um, th those sorts of medications, as well as uh, the ITU medications that I spoke about earlier, that the supply chains, the global supply chains for those medicines are, are clear. Uh 12. Hancock is fully aware of just what he was involved in, which is why he sought indemnity against events in our care homes over spring 2020. He's got a lot to lose, of course, given the ruling in London by the High Court uh, that his decision to decant known COVID-19 positive patients into care homes was unlawful. And oddly enough, despite the actions of Hancock and his department being unlawful, uh, neither faced any legal consequences, despite the, the huge numbers of deaths involved. Now, we simply don't know if the 30,000 excess deaths <clears throat> sorry, excess deaths were deliberately engineered by Matt Hancock in order to drive the pandemic. Uh, but they, the deaths, certainly did just that. And in fact, without the 30,000 care home deaths uh, in spring of 2020, it's highly doubtful the lockdown could have been extended past the three-week time period. So perhaps Hancock and the government uh, just got lucky. All in all, then, very depressing. So to cheer you up a bit, here's an amusing clip from comedian Russell Howard. I've just arrived at the station on my way to the manifesto launch. I'm really excited about this manifesto. Such a positive, vibrant future vision for Britain. And of course I'm thrilled with the sheer amount of progress for the NHS. The record Down levels the base, of creepy fucking for the NHS. Man, baby. The 40 new hospitals, 20 hospital upgrades, the extra Stop GPs and the extra GP appointments that we're committing to. And there's lots more to come. I can't wait to get on with it. Now, finally, this video is based on a chapter from my book COVID-19 All Lies, All Crime, uh, which is linked in the description box below.